And hello everyone, I'm Art Fennell. Thanks for joining us for the program. A lethal debate is beginning in the nation's highest court. The U.S. Supreme Court has agreed now to hear a challenge from two death row inmates in Kentucky over the constitutionality of death by lethal injection. At issue here is this, whether or not lethal injection actually violates the Constitution's ban on cruel and unusual punishment. Take a look at some background information on this. 25 years ago, on December 7th, 1982, Charles Brooks Jr. was the first American to die by lethal injection. He was put to death in Texas for murder. Death by lethal injection is considered humane. It uses a lethal cocktail of an anesthetic, a muscle paralyzer, and a substance to stop the heart. 37 of the 38 states that employ capital punishment use lethal injection, either as their sole method or as an option. By the way, the 38th state is Nebraska, and in Nebraska, they only put people to death by electrocution. However, at least 10 other states suspended the use of the three-drug lethal injection cocktail recently after opponents alleged that it was ineffective and cruel. Now, according to the Death Penalty Information Center, that's where we got that information. We want to talk about it. Joining me now is Jeffrey Tubin, a legal analyst and Supreme Court insider and author of the newly released book, The Nine, Inside the Secret World of the Supreme Court. Jeffrey, thanks for being a part of the program. Hi, Art. I want to talk about the book in just a moment, but first this is issue of lethal injection here. Now, is this more of a debate about the method of killing or about the act of execution itself? It's really about the method. No one thinks that the current Supreme Court is going to end executions. And the irony here is that lethal injection was introduced because there started to be a consensus that electrocution, the previously widely used technique, was inhumane. The problem is that many doctors and researchers have found that lethal injection can be cruel. In fact, one of the drugs used in the, the cocktail has been banned by veterinarians in putting animals to sleep because they believe it, it causes suffering by the animal. Well, obviously there are different forms of capital punishment. There's the electric chair, which a lot of people, states still use. Hanging, we've, we've, we've seen that in the past. Firing squads. This lethal cocktail in comparison seems, you know, the, the most humane in comparison because it simply puts you to sleep. Correct? Well, that, that's, that's what it is advertised as doing. There is some research that suggests there is considerably more suffering than, uh, it, uh, th than it appears. I mean, the whole debate is kind of paradoxical because, after all, you are putting someone to death. So uh, the issue of cruelty hardly seems uh, a part of the story. But uh, th the Supreme Court has struggled with this issue, although the issue of method of execution has not come up before the justices in about a hundred years. Wow. Well, I've covered um, uh, electrocutions before um, when people have been put into the electric chair, and uh, let me tell you, that can be, really be... Did you see, did you see uh, someone be electrocuted? In, in South Carolina wow. years ago, and, 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 you know, the electric chair is older than the matter. You know, they shave the head and put you in the water and everything like that. But no, I... I... What do we expect the justices um, uh, will, will do in this case? And you're an insider in these matters. Well, I, I think this case will reflect a lot larger trend, which I discuss in the nine, which is this is a much more conservative court than it's been in some time under Chief Justice Roberts, looking at him there. This court, I suspect, will uphold uh, lethal injections because they are limiting the, uh, the, the scope of the Bill of Rights and cruel and unusual punishment in the Eighth Amendment is, one, is part of that. And the, the, the strong trend is towards a narrowing of those protections. Um, the Supreme Court, the, the justices, uh, they're a hard group to, to really get a good gauge on because they, they serve um, at the pleasure of the, of the administration. They serve for life, uh, and they're very secretive. What's it like getting insider information on these guys? Well, it, it, was, it was something of a struggle, I have to tell you, Art. I mean, it was, it's, it's hard, but, you know, I think the justices, some of them come from a different generation where uh, they're used to a little more openness from the press. I think a lot of them recognize that, you know, the Supreme Court doesn't have an army. It doesn't have a, uh, any enforcement mechanism. It's a tiny staff by the s standards of the federal government. So they recognize that they need 
the consent of the governed more, uh, to, to have their, their but, views honored. So they want to have the world but, know a little bit more about them. But do they really they need consent, though? I, the, on the surface, and, and just in people that I've spoken with casually about these matters, they say that the members of the Supreme Court um, are perceived to be elitist. And, and for good reason, and they, they carry themselves that way. Well, Did you find that? Well, there is some of that. There, the, the, some of them are more pretentious th than others. But you know, by and large, I think they are an admirable group. But what's really significant is they view issues very differently. You know, one of the themes of my book is that there's really no such thing as law independent of politics. You know, judicial philosophy, ideology, that's what matters when you're talking about issues like abortion, affirmative action, the death penalty. There is, these, these are questions that don't have clear right and wrong answers. It depends who you are and what you bring to the decision uh, more than the facts of the case itself. Uh, have you gotten any feedback from any of the members of the uh, Supreme Court uh, you know, to your book, The Nine? The book has only been out a week, and I've been waiting nervously, frankly, <laughs> to hear from any of the justices. So far, no word. And I expect they will remain, they will keep an Olympian distance from my book. Well, we'll we shall see. Uh, uh, Jeffrey Tubin. we enjoy your work on TV and uh, your analysis. And uh, uh, he's the author of the book, The Nine, Inside the Supreme Court. It is now available for your reading. Jeffrey, thank you. Thanks, we'll have Art. to have you back again. Oh, great. Okay. All right. The, the question, though, back to this issue of uh, lethal injection, what do you think about it? It's really, uh, is it for you an issue of capital punishment itself or the method in which to do it? Is it cruel? Uh, constitutional? Your thoughts, log on to CNA.TV, then click on the icon for Art Fennell reports.